Hello, I think I waited a little too late into the day to film this video because the sun's almost gone, um, but it's okay. I'm here to talk about Pachinko. I read it last month in April. Um, I wanted to film this video like a day after I started reading it because I loved it so much, but I finished it. It took me a whole month to finish it. It is a thick boy. I feel like for the last two years, I was filming more of these wrap-ups and TBRs and things like that. And I wanted to try. I mean, it was my first time kind of getting into the whole book reviewing thing. And when I first started, I basically wanted to just kind of talk about all the books I was reading, right? But as time has passed, I read a lot of books, but I talk only about the ones that I genuinely enjoyed. Or I have something nice, not nice, but something meaningful to add to the conversation. Sometimes there are awful books and I'll talk about them simply because I feel like it's worth talking about but then there's quite a few books that i feel like quite meh about that i just kind of exclude if you want to know my full kind of reading everything you should probably follow me on goodreads because you'll see the full set there i think i've read close to 20 books this year but i haven't talked about all of them so if you're wondering why am i t saying such good things about every single book i'm reading i'm not it's just that i'm sharing the ones that i feel that you guys will enjoy so here I am talking about today, Pachinko, written by Min Jin Lee. I watched a short interview before I started reading this book. Was it towards the end? Um, I don't know, but basically I read a little bit about why the author wrote the book. I think it's somewhere in the end. And what I understood was um, basically that she's not born in Korea. I might be wrong. Um, I thought I was picking up a book written by someone who was born and like brought up in Korea, but, but I believe that's not the case. But still, this book kind of follows the story of a family over, I would say, a hundred years. Um, so many generations. And it mostly talks about the life of Korean people right after the war. Um, who kind of moved to Japan and lived there and what it meant, what the Korean identity meant for them and a lot more complex topics. Why I particularly love this book is because it shares a fictional story but within that fictional story, it gives you the story of an entire population, of an entire like identity. There is so much packed into this book about what it means to be Korean, what it means to be a Korean in J Japan, what it means to be uh, mixed, what it means to be many different things. And I feel like a lot of the time, especially when it comes to imperialism, there are certain, um, I guess, empires that are more known or more studied in certain parts of the world than others. Definitely the Japanese empire is not something that I went into much depth in school or learned or much about or knew much about. So learning about the Japanese empire from the lens of a Korean family was very interesting because if you think about it, I'm Indian, I probably will not give you an accurate account. I mean, no one currently can ever give you an accurate account of what it was like to be living in a country that has been colonized, right? That is now in the past, for which I'm very grateful. But I'm only thinking about it because I'm thinking about it from the perspective of this book. Um, it, it's a story that can only be handed out generations and only to a certain extent. Some of these things are very hard to understand and feel. And I feel like so many people have such quick judgments on certain people or certain cultures without really understanding the historical context behind them. I have been taking an an interest in Korean culture from for quite some time now and my interest didn't start with k-pop or k-drama or any of that maybe my first introduction to Korea was back in like high school this is like more than 10 years ago was k-drama but Korea has always been quite interesting case study I shouldn't call it a case study a very interesting example of a country that has managed to reinvent itself in such a short period of time and do it do it so drastically different put itself on the map, become one of the strongest kind of economies in the world. And that is really interesting, for me at least. Not just like, oh, that's that's cool how they've done it, but also what actually went into making it the country that it is. And I feel like I have even more respect now after reading this book, just knowing that so many people put in so much effort. There's a lot more other issues currently present in Korea that 
is not kind of talked about or put in the mainstream media. You hear about how amazing its its kind of technology is and all its big companies and K-pop and you hear about all of those things. But there are a lot of issues, um, much like Japan, that is not publicized. There's a lot of issues with kind of com competition among young people and there's a lot of issues with older people getting abandoned by their families. Those things are not here in the book, but you kind of see why those issues came up when you hear or read about the stories of the people who lived before them or the generations before them. This book kind of starts about 100 years ago. It starts off with this little baby who was born with some um, disability and as it grows up, it, you know, you see their, their life. This is like almost 100 years ago and then he gets married and has a daughter. You learn about the woman he gets married to in her life. Then you follow the daughter's life. So the daughter is Sunja and Sunja is kind of the main character and although the book starts off with the like generations before her her generation or her life is the most closely followed one and then there is a little bit more after um kind of like so just children so what happens is you get to learn a lot about different periods and different um, changes that happen in Korea at the time and also in Japan. Sunja was born in near Busan in a little fisherman village. She lived with her mom till something happens and then she's forced kind of to move to Osaka and that's where she has children and then her experience is what we follow as a Korean girl living in Japan, doesn't know how to speak Japanese, can't really, I mean she moves at a quite a late age and she still segregated like kind of moved away from the Japanese so she has lives in this small very poor Korean community in Osaka and what was really interesting is her relationship with her brother-in-law um, a man who despite having to take up many jobs despite you know struggling to even feed his family refuses the, for the women in the family to take up jobs and you think about it in today's world why there are still men in this world despite the fact that they cannot feed their family will refuse to let the women work in this day and age i don't think it's even a choice unless two people are working you cannot possibly move out of the situation you are in it has become an impossibly difficult world to live in and staying at home is not an option for anyone you know you have to be employed more than anything for your own independence and peace of mind but this is a very outdated concept that still exists in some parts of the world and that is truly it boggles my mind. Once Sunja has children, you kind of follow their experience as someone who's born in Japan and you know they identify as Japanese but not really because Japan never really accepts them. Later on she puts in themes such as you know about citizenship and even if you're born in that country you're not given it and just the different complexities that like I for once can understand because if anyone reads about the immigration laws that were passed in England over the last I would say between, I want to say between 60s and um, 90s, you read about the immigration laws that were passed in the in, passed in the UK and you learn so much about what could have been and how different it could have been before the common, Commonwealth. And basically it's just, basically it was just a huge parallel between what happened with the British Empire and its colonies and then the Japanese Empire and its colonies and no matter how redacted our history books are books like this will always do a very good job of educating people on certain things that are left kind of left out and not really given the focus that it needs to be if you've ever been interested in really understanding the historical context about kind of the Asian countries in general not just Japan and um, Korea but also but also other countries in and around I would definitely definitely recommend this you also kind of learn about the condition of people in J japanese people in japan at the time because what happens is like sometimes our, this is a theme that was very well done in akala's natives which is also something that i'll be reviewing soon where he talks about how his grandfather came from the caribbean islands and when he came here he was like oh poor white people that exists because the idea of white people that was sold to him that when he lived in the Caribbean was so different to what he actually saw. And I can attest to the fact that when you come to a country where you think, you know, people live great lives and it's the place to be and you see how 
truly that you see the class divide and how truly it's not the case there's a certain percentage of the population that is kind of how what is portrayed internationally but there's a lot of people in this country working class that are suffering a great deal a great deal more than you know maybe the middle class would be in a place like india so i can definitely see why she talked about you know it's not just you cannot put a blanket statement on all the people in a country that they are a certain way. You need to understand the different layers, the different kind of class layers. You know, people can talk about how ridiculous the Indian caste system is without really understanding that it, there are different versions. You call it something different, but it exists in your country as well. And there is some type of segregation, some kind of... Um, I guess divide in every single country it just has different names so there was a lot a lot packed in here um towards the end i did feel like a few themes were a little bit rushed but i couldn't i wouldn't say it's a bad thing necessarily um i just knew that there were so many things that she wanted to talk about but she couldn't do that in as much depth as she did certain others but i don't think she just kind of touched and left it i did think she did a very good job of condensing as much as she could in a very um i guess short not short but like this could have been a three book series and, and i would have read it definitely um the only character that I felt, I guess, slightly confused by initially was Noah, Sunja's son. And I feel like Noah is, I would say, the second biggest character in the book. And his whole journey is about being born in Japan, being Korean, and how he's treated in school, how he's treated in the workplace. His entire fight towards being, you know, coming out of the stereotype and forming an identity that is just him, you know, beyond all the other things that people want to label him as. He just wants to be Noah. He wants to be himself and how truly difficult that turns out to be. And some of the parts, it really shocked me. Like, so I thought the book was more or less predictable too. Till I got to a certain point, I was like, okay, I wasn't expecting that at all. And that was really heartbreaking. But apart from that, I would say every single storyline that was started was ended really, really well. Um, there's also the whole mother and daughter relationship between Sunja and her mother that towards the later half of the book was explored really well. There was a really good um, Kunghi, I think that's what it is, Sunja's sister-in-law that she kind of spends a lot of time alone with and how Kunghi has been kind of staying in Japan for a longer time than Sunja. But you learn about this character that is, you know, comes across as so, you know, intelligent and smart in Korean, but the moment she has to interact with Japanese people, it kind of changes. And there's so many small, I guess, little, um, human nature aspects that are explored in this book that paints a really beautiful picture of how complex we are as human beings, how just moving away to a different country doesn't mean shit. <laughs> it's a lot more complicated than that. And what people face on a day-to-day -day is a lot more complicated than that. But 100% beautiful book. I am sad that I bought this almost a year ago and only got around to reading it now. What I 100% recommend, I'm sure you will not hate it. So if you're looking for a book, even if it's an audiobook, definitely give it a go. That's all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I'll see you next time.